Imagine, you are a sea monkey. And you're not just any dollar store aqua chip, you are a smart sea monkey. Even though you look like a mermaid that was put in a microwave and then had three testicles glued to its head, you possess a high enough cognitive awareness that allows you to hope, dream, and take pride in who you are and the things you've done. Every morning you wake up next to your sexy sea monkey spouse, eat a bowl of your favorite yeast, and watch the sun rise from your plastic sand castle. In these moments, you reflect on everything in your life that makes you happy and appreciate the miracle of being alive. And then some dude on the internet tells you that everything you know is a lie and you're not even real. Your precious yeast doesn't really exist. You are a novelty item, modified in a lab to go from a state of stasis to living in a manufactured environment, all for the purpose of some sticky-fingered kid to stick you on their dresser and watch you from their bed. In our technologically advanced world, we now find ourselves to be the monkeys of the sea in this scenario. Instead of grasping the reality that our entire existence may be a pursuit for 70s nostalgia, we find ourselves questioning if we are currently living inside a computer simulation. This is the simulation theory, a theory that suggests that our universe, or at least the universe knowable to us, is a part of a computer simulation for reasons that we can infer but never know why. While we can never truly know the purpose of being in a simulation, just like the sea monkey is not able to understand the thoughts of the child watching from their bed, we can try to find out if we are in one. Is this possible or merely science fiction at this point? Lucky or maybe unlucky for us, there are scientists who are attempting just that. To begin, we'd like to offer some advice. As a wise Redditor and a Joker fan page once famously said, we live in a society. And he's right, we do live in a society. A society with consequences for our actions. Whether you are the first you to ever exist or one of the other millions of yous in a vast amount of simulations, your reality is the one you currently perceive. In this reality, your actions have lasting effects on yourself and others around you. So keep that in mind before you get five dragons tattooed on your face. The world might be a video game, but that doesn't mean it's a game where you can do whatever you want. So don't live like it's Grand Theft Auto because none of this really exists. Trying to see if you can get away with robbing a train might seem fun, but we can't promise you that you'll respawn if things go awry. Now that our consciousness is clear, let's learn what the simulation theory is and if it's possible to find out if we are living in one. Philosopher Nick Bostrom first presented the idea that we might live in a simulation in his seminal paper in 2003. Bostrom theorizes that one of these three propositions must be true. One, the human species is very likely to become extinct before reaching a post-human stage, known as the Great Filter. Two, post-human civilizations are extremely unlikely to run a significant number of simulations of their evolutionary history. Three, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. So it's kind of like The Matrix, but without the cool action scenes and more of the depressing parts. Let's make this simple with an easy to follow seventh grade if then hypothesis. If humans are able to overcome extinction and advance to a post-human stage, then their technology will eventually be able to run ancestor simulations. And if this is possible, then it is likely that we are in one of the many simulations. Bostrom's hypothesis has been supported and challenged by philosophers, physicists, and technologists, debating the merits of a base reality that precedes our own. Astronomer David Kipping of Columbia University breaks Bostrom's three options into a 50-50 probability under the notion that without data or leanings in either direction, the hypothesis is rooted in assumption, which makes the odds like flipping a coin. Researchers at Oxford state that under classical mechanics, it is impossible to simulate a conscious universe. The simulated universe must have its limitations, opposed to the infinite scale of the base universe we would need to be tricked to believe that there is more to what we are actually experiencing under the beliefs of our expanding universe. Theoretically, in a scenario where humans continue to advance and descend into space, computing power can excel to produce enough power to generate a substantial simulation by harnessing energy of suns and potentially black holes. Critics of simulation theory believe that these currently unknowable factors in quantum mechanics or principles so complex we cannot comprehend. That believing in the theory is like having faith in religion with an archetype creator. 
While debates take place on both sides, scientists are beginning to test the 21st century's most prominent topic at late night stoner sessions. In a 2017 paper on testing the simulation theory, four physicists explore how such testing can be done under the assumption that if the system performing the simulation has limitations, then the system would render reality like a video game renders graphics, only at the moment of observation by an individual. This gives scientists testing the theory two strategies to find out if we live in a simulation. The first is testing the moment of rendering, or finding a glitch. To do this, scientists are attempting to study if reality is rendered when wave particles are determined by detection on an apparatus, or by the way wave patterns are observed. By using the double slit experiment, scientists are able to record and detect the wave pattern traveling through double slits from a particle generator to find out if there's a consistency or if it is generated with our interaction. Think of it as Pac-Man wanted to find out if he was inside a video game. As the cheese-looking glutton follows a programmed path to stuff his face with yummy white balls, he expects that a cherry power-up is right around the corner, as it always is. That is the nature of his game. However, if that bastard orange ghost catches Pac by surprise with no path to the cherry, Pac knows he can break the rules and scale the walls of his digital prison to get to the cherry that way. If he does this and to his surprise the cherries are not there, he has observed a glitch in the game, thus filling him with newfound existential dread. He would go home to Ms. Pac-Man carrying the burdens of his challenged reality. She'll pick up on his attitude because that's the type of relationship they have and make him his favorite dessert. She'll ask him how work was, and he'll say fine, and she'll say, Patrick, we've been married for 41 years now, and you're not fooling me with this. I can tell when something's up with you. I don't want to talk about it, he'll exclaim, to which she'll respond, you were sneaking around with that Blinky again, weren't you? I told you that if you ever did this to me again, I'd leave you. I wasn't with Blinky, he yells. Then what is it then? Tell me. Tell me now, she pleads. We're in a game, Sharon, he says, breaking down crying. We're in a game. The second experiment is finding out if we live in a simulation based on exploiting conflicting requirements of logical consistency preservation, scientifically known as tear our reality shit up and see what happens. By forcing the engine that would do the VR rendering to create discontinuities in its rendering or within our reality, it would indicate that our reality is indeed a simulation. Could this be happening when we don't even realize it in cases like the Mandela effect? That's where it gets tricky, because in order to exploit a requirement of logical consistency, we have to come up with a way to break our entire way of thinking and understanding. Physicists are attempting this by doing what they love best, tinkering around with numbers and complex formulas. You know physicists, they love to tinker. But we are offering a simple alternative to this that anyone can do. Take your grandmother's iPhone 6 and check to see if she's ever closed a tab in Safari. If there aren't hundreds of tabs still open from 2014, then a logical consistency will be detected. Therefore, your Grammy is Sim. We don't know yet how successful these experiments will be, but this is a step forward in further understanding the nature of our reality. However, evidence for the theory is just a step, and there is much more to find out, more that we cannot fully expect to know in our lives. Which leads you to have faith in the simulation or not. But even if we are in a simulation, we still don't know what comes after the simulation ends. With the knowledge that we do have, we know that your life and time on Earth is just as precious, simulated or not. So spend it like a sea monkey and enjoy the things that make you happy.